What is remote viewing? It's different things for different people. For myself, I consider remote viewing an alternate means of perception. We have the normal five senses of hearing, touch, sight, taste, and smell. But in addition, we have an intuitive sense that seems to be unbounded in terms of time and space, meaning we have the ability through training to perceive things that are very far away, many miles away, many kilometers distant, or in the past, present, or the future. Many experiments, many experiments have been done to demonstrate that this ability does in fact exist. There is tremendous controversy about why it exists, how could it be? Remote viewing is called remote viewing as if the eyes are the major component or seeing is the major component, but in reality all of the senses work. It probably should be called remote perception, but the word remote viewing has been used for so long that it basically sticks. So when one remote views, let's give an example of a visual image to give you an idea of what the remote viewing procedures lead up to in terms of what the perceptions are like. In terms of a visual image, you're looking at the screen right now of me recording this particular talk. Now while you're looking at the screen, imagine a pencil. See the pencil with the yellow color? the number two on it, the Eberhardt label, the pink eraser, the sharp point. Now you're bringing that in from the memory, your memory. Now the image that you're getting of me on the screen is coming through your eyes, being essentially projected onto a layer of cells in the, in the brain. Well the remembered image is being projected onto those same cells. The neurologists have sorted this out. But the ocular image the image coming through the eyes is bright, clear. The remembered image, if you're looking at that pencil with your eyes open, notice that it's a bit translucent. You can sort of see through it. It's not as bright. It's not as opaque. Well, the remembered image being projected onto the same layer of cells, the same screen, if you will, as the ocular image, the image coming through the eyes, is dimmer. The remote viewing image is like that, although it's dimmer still, foggier, fuzzier, out of focus. The remote viewing image is more difficult to perceive. What training does with remote viewing is it allows the person to separate out, to differentiate the ocular images that are coming through the eyes from the remembered images and the remote viewing images, which are foggier, fuzzier, dimmer. It's like being able to perceive the outline of a ship that is being seen in a very dense fog on the coast. You sort of see something there, but you're trying to figure out from the outline what it actually is. That's what a remote viewing image is like, foggier, fuzzier. And so, a trained remote viewer is getting those perceptions and writing them down as quick as possible and then later on trying to sort out actually what the perceptions were all about. So remote viewing, what is it? It's an expanded level of perception. Now there's a lot of physics behind what remote viewing would be. That's a separate question. How can remote viewing actually work? What's the, the physical mechanism by which the images actually get to us in the brain. That's another story and that is an intriguing scientific puzzle. But the remote viewing experience itself is like I've just described to you.